Action. Okay, our topic is central nervous system radiography. My name is Jeff Blankenship. My name is Rochelle Skipper, and we will be going over the procedure of malleography. Okay, so malleography is the radiographic demonstration of central nervous system structures inside the spinal canal. It provides visualization of the spinal cord and nerve roots. Uh, it's performed by injecting contrast directly into the subarachnoid space called an intrathecal injection. It's an outpatient procedure, and it's usually followed by a CT. Paragraphy is used to diagnose pathology and treat of the spinal cord and the spinal canal. These abnormalities will appear radiographically, deformities in the subarachnoid place, and obstruction of the floor contrast around the spinal cord. Okay, so some specific indications for myelography would include herniated discs or bone fragments protruding into the spinal canal, or really any tumor or cyst that is occupying space in the spinal canal, be putting pressure on the spinal cord and nerves. Um, also, inflammation of the spinal cord or one of its protective membranes, like the arachnoid. Um, some contraindications to the procedure would include increased intracranial pressure or allergy to iodinated contrast. Risk involved bleeding or at the injection site, damage to nerve root, at the injection site, or adverse contrast, medium like anaphylactic shock. <coughs> Lactoacidosis, which is a buildup of acid in the blood, which is caused of an ionic contrast agent, and glucose, also radiation exposure. Okay, so before we go any further talking about myelography, we're just going to go over some basic anatomy of the central nervous system as it relates to myelography. So, the spinal cord is continuous with the brain, and it extends to the level of about L1, L2, and it ends in a pointed process called the conus medullaris. So you can see there um, the spinal cord inside of the spinal canal. You can see the end of it, the conus, right here. And then you can see there's these uh, group of nerves that kind of hang down from the end and continue through the spinal canal. Does anyone know what these are called? It'll be on the test, so <laughs> you might want to look it up before the presentation is done. The anatomy of CNS is the brain and the spinal cord enclosing three protective membranes called meninges. Our meter, arachnoid, and dormant. Subarachnoid space is located between the power meter and arachnoid. Subarachnoid extends to the level of S2 and contains CFS and is the site of contrast injection. So as you see right here, this is between the parmier and the arachnoid, and this is where they may inject the needle for the contrast. Right. So the contrast mixes with the three row spinal fluid and it can flow around the spinal cord. So patient preparation. Patient should be well hydrated and should not take any medication 24 hours before the exam. Uh, a medical history should be taken that includes all current medications and allergies, as well as a history of reactions to contrast. Um, the procedure should be thoroughly explained, and a written consent form must be signed by the patient. Um, vital signs, of course, are taken before the procedure begins to establish a baseline, and the patient will be dressed in a gown with an open back. Also, the room should be prepared, the radiographic tape should be cleaned, and equipment should be prepared with a foot rest and a shoulder support. Contrast and the store lumbar tray should be prepared for the physician. So you can see the table has the foot rest and the shoulder rest, so when they tilt up or down, the patient doesn't fall off. Okay, the type of contrast that's used is water-soluble, non-ionic iodinated contrast. Uh, water soluble is used because it's easily absorbed by the body. Prior to the 1970s, a lipid-based contrast was used, and the major disadvantage of that was that it was very persistent, so it was not absorbed by the body, so after the exam, it would have to be removed with a needle from the subarachnoid space. 
it's obviously water soluble, it's a big improvement. Also, non ionic contrast is considered safe for intrathecal injection. Um, Merrill's says that an intrathecal injection of ionic contrast could cause a fatal reaction. Um, and the two brands most commonly used Isoview and Omnipake. Injection of contrast is done between L2 and L3. For cervical and thoracic myelography, lower injection sites may be used. But if there is any complications, the doctors will try to puncture. The stomach puncture may be considered as an option. As you see here, this is back of the head. It's gonna, the needle will be located in between the atlas and the occipital bone. And this is where the injection of contrast will yeah, appear. Like right here is where it would go. I see, but that's only if their condition does not permit to go in the lumbar area. So this one shows, it's kind of hard to see, but um, so this is L1, um, L2, and this is L3. So this is a needle going in between the space of L2 and L3. You see it's the subarachnoid space goes all the way down, so it'll still go in there. Um, there's no danger of hitting the spinal cord as there is at the L1, L2 level. So. Um, so for the exam, the patient will be placed prone or lateral recumbent on the pleural table. The injection site will be numbed and the physician will insert a 20 or 22 gauge needle under fluoroscopic guidance into the subarachnoid space. So one indication that the needle is correctly placed is that cerebrospinal fluid will flow back into the needle. Um, some of this may be withdrawn for analysis and then a small amount of contrast is injected. A scalp film will be taken prior to injection of contrast and may be included in an AP and cross lateral table. Another cross lateral will be taken after injection but before removal of a needle for a correct placement of the needle. Okay, so during the procedure the doctor will tilt the table towards the head of the feet to manipulate the flow of contrast. So tip it towards the head, the contrast will flow up towards the head. Um, the patient will roll to the side for lateral and oblique views, and uh, films are taken at any level of obstruction or blockage of contrast. So if the lumbar spine is the main area of interest, the RT may be asked to, to take a conus view, which is basically just an AP or PA view. It shows the end of the spinal cord, the conus, and so the center ray is perpendicular to about L1. So we have a couple pictures here. This is a patient in film A where you can see the contrast is a steady flow where there is no obstruction but it's done in another view in film B, another position, you can see there's obstruction of contrast which would indicate nerve damage or a slip disc. Right. So it just shows why it, it, it highlights why it's really important to get different views because this is the same patient. Everything was normal here. But then with the extension, you can see there's obviously uh, some pathology. And this is like an AP or PA view, um, and you can see at this level right here, it looks like there's an intervertebral disc um, contributing to narrowing of the spinal canal, spinal stenosis. Um, so, like I said before, after the myelogram. The patient usually has a CT immediately afterwards. Um, the patient is held for a few hours in the department before being released. And once released, the patient should remain on bed rest with the head elevated for up to 12 hours, up to 24 hours. Now so. we will demonstrate the injection of contrast in a needle. <laughs> So, has anyone seen this exam before? No. So, now we're going to show you how to inject the contrast. We have the patient to get dressed. Normally, I wouldn't have clothes on. <laughs> you have to use your imagination. Yes. So they supply them. So afterwards, we'll pass around some needles. And